So we have we have actually discussed the bug converter, the circuit arrangement, uh, the components that are actually used in the bug converter are the same, but the arrangement has now been changed. If we look at the arrangement of the boost converter uh, and compare it with the bug converter, so in the bug converter the inductor was actually the switch was actually present before the inductor, but in the boost converter the inductor is actually uh, now before the switches. So now the switch has uh, actually. Now the switch actually become uh, has shifted over there, and the uh, inductor is now over over here. But in case of the in case of buck converter, the switch was present uh, over in place of the inductor. So the arrangement has been changed. So when the arrangement changes, actually the converter characteristic changes. Uh, in the in the other circuits, we will uh, the same components will be used, but the, but the inductor location, the capacitor location will changes, and same the characteristic of the converter will change. So these components will be used, but the location will uh, shift from the inductor location will be somewhere here near for, uh, before the switch or after the switch. So the characteristic of these converter will change. Now this is actually a boost converter. The boost converter consists of the same components, the inductor, the switches over here, the capacitor and the resistor. The switch, when, when the switch is connected at the position one, the inductor, the current flows through the inductor, and when the switch is connected at the position two, the same inductor is involved in the second uh, in the switch position. In the buck converter, when the switch was connected at position one, the induct current flows through the inductor. But when the switch was connected at position two, there was no supply or there is no no inductor involved in that case. But in in case of boost converter, the inductor is involved in both cases. When the switch is position two, the inductor is over here. When the switch is connected at position two, the inductor is still involved in that case. If you want to replace this uh, single pole double throw switch uh, through a semiconductor device, we can, can we can actually uh, replace it with a MOSFET and a diode. So when the MOSFET turns on, it means the switch one is connected. In that case, diode will reverse bias, and when the uh, MOSFET become turns off, and then the diode will uh, then the diode will turn, turns on. It means the switch two is actually connected. So what we will do, we will uh, we will repeat the same process for the boost converter. Uh, we will consider both the switch position when the switch is connected position one, when the switch is connected position two. We will consider both the circuits, derive the equations of the inductor voltages, capacitor current for both the cases, and after that we will apply small approximation, and then the steady state condition, and then we'll derive the output voltages. So the first case is. Uh, switch position when the switch is connected position two we will get this type of arrangement and when the switch is connected position two so we will get this type of arrangement if we look at that arrangement the inductor is involved in both the cases so due to the inductor involved involvement in both the cases the actually the current or the voltage boost up in at the output voltage so what uh, so uh, so only change in the arrangement when the arrangement changes the inductor location changes the circuit characteristic actually changes. So now we will do uh, for the sub interval when the switch is connected position two, we, we, we were getting this type of circuit. In this case, what is the inductor voltage? The inductor voltage is actually equal to VL is actually equal to VG. And what is, what is the capacitor current? The capacitor current is actually equal to the capacitor. This uh, capacitor and this resistor actually what they are connected in parallel. So if we consider this point as a node, we can say that uh, zero is equal to IC plus IR as this current is leaving current and this current is leaving current or we can say that IC is actually equal to minus IR or what is IR equal to minus V divided by R. Now apply small approximation on this equation so we will get VL is equal to VG or IC is equal to minus V divided by R. Now look at the V, the output voltage become ball v it means the ripple has been eliminated in this case now when the switch is connected to position two what is the inductor voltage and what is the capacitor current in this case the inductor voltage is equal to v is, is equal to vg minus v where v is the output voltage or what is the capacitor current equal to now the capacitor current is equal to il is equal to ic plus ir or we can say that ic is actually equal to il minus ir 
and IR is actually equal to minus V divided by R. So the capacitor current is actually equal to minus IL minus V divided by R. Apply small ripple approximation, we can say that VG is equal to approximately equal to minus V or capacitor current is equal to I minus V divided by R. Look at this current, this current was first and alternating current, AC current, as there were ripple in inductor current. But after applying small uh, ripple approximation, this current become a DC current, or this voltage become DC voltage. This is actually the condition. Now draw the waveform. The first waveform is for the inductor current, the inductor current, inductor voltage, uh, inductor voltage in the first case is equal to VG, and in the second case, it is equal to VG minus V. But we don't know the value of Vg or V, so we will just randomly draw their equation, uh, their uh, their waveform. So we will say that uh, that uh, from zero to DTS, the inductor voltage is equal to Vg, or uh, from DTS to D uh, to TS, the inductor voltage is equal to actually equal to Vg minus V. We have we have drawn this waveform as negative waveform, and this waveform as positive waveform. So the case is, uh, as we know, that the output voltage will be greater than the input voltage. So when the input voltage is 10 volt and the output voltage is 11 volt, so automatically this waveform will be negative waveform as it is a boost converter. So that's why we have to draw, we have draw this waveform as negative waveform. Now, what is the inductor current equal to? Inductor current in the first case is equal to minus V divided by R. And in the second case, it is equal to I minus V divided by R. So just draw your waveform in the first case is equal to minus V by R, already negative. So that's why we have to draw it uh, uh, as a negative waveform up to, D, up to DTS. And after from DTS to TS, the waveform become positive I minus V divided by R. Here, a term is used D dash. What is actually D dash? D dash is actually equal to one minus D. So we can say that this is this point is DTS and this is TS. So if we take TS as a common, what, what left over here? Uh, actually one minus D left over here. So we, we can say that one minus D is also equal to D dash, which is also uh, mentioned over here. If we look over here, this is also mentioned over there, this. So complement D dash, D dash is actually equal to one minus D. So where D dash is used, this is actually, this actually mean one minus D. So this is just for simplification purpose. So these waveform are formed, now apply the uh, inductor voltage balance condition. So apply, it means that you have to just apply the Fourier series over here. So we can say that from zero to DTS, what is VL equal to VG? So and one word TS integral of zero to DTS VG D, DTS plus from DTS to TS VG minus V into DTS. So equal to zero, equal to VL. So this is this will be the uh, this will be the equation for this uh, this waveform. After that, we just simplify it and put the condition that actually VL is equal to zero uh, equal to zero. When we solve it for V, what we actually get, we get V is equal to VG divided by D dash. Or we can also say that actually D dash is equal to one minus D. Now V is the output voltage, VG is the input voltage and D dash is the duty cycle. So if we put, uh, if we put the D value, so what is actually input voltage? Input voltage, suppose it is uh, 10 volts and uh, divide by one minus D and we put D value equal to zero. So what we will get, we will get V equal to VG. V equal to VG. Or if we put uh, D equal to one, so VG divided by one minus D, D equal to zero. So one minus one equal to zero. What we will get output voltage equal to infinite. So we can say that we can get an output voltage from this converter up from input equal to input voltage and greater than input voltage depending upon the value of d so that is actually also called a boost converter this this uh, converter actually step up the dc voltage so this is the ratio of the uh, md where, where what is actually m of d equal to this is actually the ratio of output the input we can say that v divided by vg is equal to one divided by one minus d so if we put the D value equal to zero, what we will get MD equal to zero, or uh, M of D equal to zero, uh, what is the conversion ratio? Or if we put D equal to one, what we will get? We will equal to 
uh, if you put different value, the ratio, we will get this type of waveform from uh, this equation. Now, what is the inductor current and uh, DC uh, capacitor current uh, equation? The capacitor current, what is capacitor current equal to? The capacitor current equal to minus V divided by R in the first uh, condition. And in the second condition, it is equal to I minus V divided by R. So just uh, simply, uh, just simply put integral on in it and uh, apply the uh, charge balance and steady state condition on it. So what we will get, we will get the current equal to V divided by D dash into R, where D dash is equal to one minus D. So this type of waveform, this type of equation we will get. So this is the output current uh, for this boost converter. Now the buck converter and uh, boost converter can operate in uh, two, uh, can operate in two condition. Uh, the condition are called as the uh, CCM mode or DCM mode, where CCM mode is a con continuous conduction mode and DCM is a dis uh, continuous conduction mode. So in the CCM mode, uh, in the CCM mode, in the CCM mode, the current never approaches to zero or never become uh, never become or never equal to zero. So we can say that the circuit is operating in CCM mode. When the inductor, when the output current approaches to zero or become negative, then we can say that the circuit operates in TCM mode. So from the inductor, uh, from the current waveform, we can say how the circuit is, or in which mode the circuit is operating. If the, in, if the output current approaches zero or become negative, then the circuit will operate in DCM mode. Or when the circuit current, output current never approaches to zero or and always greater than zero, so it means the circuit will operate in CCM mode. So this is the difference between CCM mode and DCM mode. So now these were the converter, uh, AC converter, or buck converter and boost converter. So there are also other converters uh, which, uh, which are actually uh, this is the boost converter CCM and DCM mode. This condition was for, for the buck converter CCM and DCM mode. And this, this condition is for the uh, boost converter CCM mode and DCM mode. So if we look at the current waveform, the current waveform is above zero, but we look at uh, this also, so this is mean the current, the circuit is operating in CCM mode. But if we look at this uh, waveform, so the current approaches to zero and then uh, become negative or equal to zero, and then it uh, just arises from the zero current, uh, zero ampere. So it means when the current approaches to zero, it means the circuit is operating in DCM mode. So this, these are the difference between uh, CCM mode and uh, DCM mode. Now, these are actually direct, uh, these were actually direct converters, uh, DC to DC converter. Now we are also, we will also study isolated DC to DC converter. What are actually isolated DC to DC converter? So isolated DC to DC converter doesn't mean there is proper isolation between the input and the output. Mean there is an input, there is a DC input. Uh, it's actually, this is a diagram, flow diagram of these converters. So the, there is a DC input, uh, inverter is connected, it convert that DC into AC, the AC is then transformed or to AC, and the AC is then rectified, filter, and here we get DC voltage. So in the first case, we were getting DC voltage directly, input and output are directly connected. But in the isolated to DC, DC converter, there is isolation between the input and the output, and the isolation is upward of the transformer and inverter and rectifier is in between the input and the output. Why the indirect isolation structure is there is necessary isolation is there in some uh, necessary isolation is required between the input and the output. In some cases, isolated multiple outputs are needed. So the ratio of input output voltage is far away from one. Which power semiconductor devices are used normally in the inverter side? The MOSFET IBJTs are used, and in the rectifier side, the rectifiers, uh, the diodes, Scotty diodes, or fast recovery diodes are used. So it means that this these converters actually transform DC to DC. But inside here, uh, inside this converter, inverter is present, transformer is present, and rectifier is present. After that, it actually transforms their DC to DC. So these converters are actually called isolated to DC to DC converters. Now, what are their classification? The classification, uh, 
according to whether transform uh, transformer current is unidirectional or bidirectional so isolated dc dc converters can be single ended or double ended they can be forward converter they can be flyback converter half bridge converter push push pull converter and full bridge converter uh, we will just go through the single ended converter means forward converter and a uh, flyback converter so this is actually the forward converter uh, circuit diagram uh, in, in which there is uh, this is dc voltage there is then transformer then there is rectifier and after that this is actually converted into dc so it means this is actually uh, this is actually there is isolation between the output and the input voltage so this is actually a simple this is a low cost uh, rectifier converter and actually this is a unipolar transform current or low power and it is used in low power applications and then there is a the, uh, flyback converter Flyback converter also uses uh, transforms uh, and uh, a rectifier portion. So the output and output there is relation between the output and the input uh, voltages. Uh, as there is uh, transformer is used in between that. After that, there is uh, diode was used for rectification purposes. After that, we will get DC voltage. So these type of the converters are actually called flyback converter. They are also simple, low cost and are used in low power application. So these are actually uh, isolated DC to DC converter. We will further uh, study out in detail in the next class. Uh, so now uh, what are actually, how we can configure the switch power supplies. One is the linear power supplies and the other is switching power supplies. What are actually linear power supplies? So there are line frequencies uh, in AC input so what actually they do transformation they transform it the line frequency uh, it means ac input uh, the output is ac then rectifier is present over here this rectifier actually transforms this ac into dc then the dc is filtered out to eliminate the ripples and there is a series pass uh, regulator and the output is then regulated so these are actually linear power supplies and what are what are switching power supplies the switching power supplies actually uses indirect dc to dc converter uh, there it means input ac is the input rectifier is used the rectifier rectify it to dc the dc is then filtered out now inverter is over here so inverter will convert this dc into the ac so now high frequency ac will here it will transformer is used so it is for isolation to isolate the inverter from the rectifier so this ac high frequency is transformed into ac the ac is then rectified to dc the dc is then filtered out for the elimination of the ripple and here we get regulated dc output voltage so this is the difference between the linear power supplies and uh, switching power supply that the linear power supply doesn't use isolated dc to dc converter but the switching power supply actually uses dc to dc isolated or indirect dc to dc converter where inverter rectifier transformer filters all things or all components are involved in that case. Uh, so this lecture was about the DC to DC converter in which we have studied bug converter, boost converter, and some of the isolated DC to DC converter, uh, flyback converter, and forward converter. If you have any.